thank you for having me here. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you for the exchange group because they have all brought us here. I think there's a great mix of vendors for software, hardware, as well as the end users because we all try to learn from each other because this is all so new. Now, the next thing is I'm going to take a little bit more time than the other lady over here. She just said the number or the car she had. I got seven of clubs, so I need eight of clubs person to stand up. Nine of clubs, ten of clubs, and Jack. There we go. <laughs> All right, so now I know where the, where the people are. All right. So uh, I work for Duke Energy. We are second uh, largest electric utility in the uh, United States, and we produce electricity. And as you know, it's always dangerous to work around electricity, even in the 120 volts that you have in the house. We go all the way up to 500 kilovolts. So I'm going to tell you something about our experience up to this point with the uh, augmented reality. I hate PowerPoint. I have over here in, in case <laughs> that something fails, but we will try to put some sort of presentation along that's live. And the gentleman from Ethereum is over there, so we're going to try to see if we can mix this thing, show, show, show this thing some live stuff. So how many people over here were doing augmented reality in August of 2014? I know Jeff because I met Jeff, right? So very few, right? So I started this somewhere in like July of 2014 and there were very few things on the market, right? So this right here is me in my office. I, I'm not a photogenic person, right? <laughs> As you can see, right? But this is the first set of glasses that I actually, smart glasses that I use. This is from Copen. It's called GoldenEye. And... Um, this was something that you can see was built to be put on our safety hat, right? This was me somewhere in August 2014. What we were trying to do is trying to see, okay, what this thing can do to begin with, right? So we could take pictures. We could take videos. We could store some documents on the glasses, and you could also move it, shift it. Um, and the primary use case for us was trying to see, can we get a live video and audio, right? So I went to the field. I tried to do it, and I wasn't able to. I took them home. And I tried to see, can I do it at home? And what we found out, and I'm sure everybody has IT department, it blocks the video feed. So when I took it home, ran it on my home network, it worked fine. When I took it to work, it didn't work through the firewall, right? So <laughs> lesson number one, your folks from IT are probably going to be your best friends soon if they're not, right? Or maybe, how many people would have had their projects done by now if you didn't have IT involved, right? <laughs> everybody, <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, so, so that was the first thing. So we actually had to do the separate network, right? And I have tried this with different platforms, right? I work for the Emerging Technologies Office, and by the way, I am power systems engineer, right? The reason why I'm doing this is because in ETO office, we take a look at different things that are about three to five years out from full-scale implementation, and this has an impact on operations and maintenance. So that's why it kind of comes under, under me. Um, so that was, the first, that was the first thing. Our experience, uploaded download times that we could get were about 0.2 to 0.4 seconds. And I had better chance or, or better results using this device right here in Atlanta and head end person being in Charlotte than me being 20 miles in Charlotte from the person of the head end, right? So it's all, it's all about the strength signal. As you probably know, with any one of these, you require some sort of a MiFi or one of those devices because they do not have, uh, for the most part, they don't have a cell uh, modem, in, right? That was the first use case. Here's second use case. We have tried the same stuff with Vuzix MX100. Probably a lot of people over here are familiar with it. And this is me in the field. Unfortunately, I can't simulate this. But this is me in the field looking at a particular device. And here's the person in the uh, office. And right there, uh, this is kind of our little control center, the microgrid. Right there on his uh, screen that he's looking uh, right in front of him, there's the live, direct live video and audio feed. This is very important for us because of two things, right? Number one, I don't know how much you know about elect uh, electric industry, but average tenure of the worker is close to 28 years. So we have probably close to 50% of not just us, but electric utility in general, close to 50% of people can retire within the next five to 10 years. So a lot of that stuff that we do is pretty much experience-based, so there's a lot of knowledge going to be leaving through the door. So this is something that we're also looking at, how can it help, number one, during the, uh, everybody says experts, so everybody's familiar, but for us also during the storm restoration, 
because what we do during the storm restoration, we have people like me like do the damage assessment. They have to relay the information to the head end, and then based on that stuff, the restoration goes. If you can uh, outfit 30 or 40 people with these devices, set them in the field, and have one, ex have one expert at the head end, they can communicate to each one of those, it'll go much faster, right? Then <clears throat> we went a step further, so we're gonna try to see if this works. In case it doesn't work, I have some backup files. We're gonna try to switch on the, uh, on the glasses. But we have partnered with uh, a theater. We try to get these apps, right? So this was uh, developed starting in the um, fall, uh, fall of last year. And we have a few of these apps that they have developed for us. So we're gonna try to show you some of those, right? So let's do one of those. Okay, so this is the maintenance app, right? As everybody's familiar, we have a certain number of uh, procedures that we do every day. So what I did was I just went over there, recorded a simple procedure, five steps to turn something on and five steps to turn something off. I took a video and I took pictures. So pretty much what this is here is kind of step by step and it also has a video, right? So you can see either one, three of these, right? So this is the procedure, how you turn on the SEL really from one mode to another. You can go over there step by step. You can also have pictures for every single one of those. Now, as a result of this particular app, what we have over there is the SDK that pretty much can give you either pictures associated with each step, you can have full video, and you can also have full set of instructions uh, on, the, on the screen one by one, right? So that was the first thing that we did. So right now, if we want to do anything, in terms of you know, furthering this, it's just a matter of changing the pictures, changing the videos, and the procedures. We think it has a benefit, uh, but we haven't started full-scale implementation. So another thing is, uh, in the Emerging Technologies Office, we prove concepts, right? We are vendor agnostic, so to speak, because we try to prove the technology and the concept to somebody within the utility. It can be, one, the only department that I haven't worked in the last two years is HR, right? But other than that, I think we work with a lot of departments. So we roll out technology on a small scale, test it, and then once when it's proven, then whichever department we roll it out to, then they decide which preferred vendor do they want, what is the overall solution, et cetera, right? So that was the first step. And then uh, another app that we started, that we work with them, also we work with EPRI. I don't know if you're familiar, John Simmons was here. EPRI is Electric Power Research Institute. All the utilities are members of it. They do a lot of research for all the utilities. So rather than each utility going over there and doing their own research, we kind of have EPRI do it for us so we all get benefit of it. So we work this with the EPRI, and let's try. So this is a warehouse counting app. Um, apparently we have a whole lot of warehouses with a whole lot of items in there. Uh, if you think about electric utility, at least for us, we have about 35,000 miles of transmission lines. We have 5,000 substations, all kinds of stuff. So when we do different jobs, we have a certain number of warehouses. So people go to the warehouse, get their stuff, and they, they off about two, 300 miles. So even if one bolt is missing, the whole thing has to stop. So pretty much um, what we try to do is two, two things, warehouse picking and warehouse counting. So this particular application here is warehouse counting. Essentially, we have Maximo database that has a certain number of items that are associated with the uh, warehouse. So you go, you pick any item, and then you see what is the number of Maximo. You walk up to the particular bin, you get the right uh, item. I guess this is the, how you do it. So you scan it, and then once when you scan it, then it's gonna ask you different things. For example, how many do you have? Now, I know some of this stuff requires uh, voice, and I think it's really hard to do it here. So if you really want to see, you can always go to the theater, they can show you this stuff. But you kind of tell, I want, you have eight, nine, 10, or whatnot. So internally, what we have is not direct connection to the maximum, because that would have taken a year and a half to get it through IT, right? So what we have done, we just took a, I think it was an Excel database from everything that these people in the warehouse that do the stuff would get it. And it's Excel, uh, uh, it's Excel spreadsheet that essentially has a certain number of items associated with those uh, barcodes and stuff. So what this thing does, it checks to make sure that you have that you have the right place, that you have the right item, and also that the number of items is the same as maximum. If there's a mismatch, it asks you if you wanna mark it or if you wanna um, recount. So that is the, that is the second one. Um, and then what we're working on right now, 
I think uh, the third one right now that we're working is warehouse uh, picking. And I'm sure everybody's done with directions. Now, we're, gonna, we're doing it on a smaller scale simply because we're just trying to prove the concept. So this is going to have about four beacons. And it's going to have the same stuff that you see over here. So, so the warehouse count is going to be incorporated in there. So that's kind of our, our thing that we're doing right now. Okay, we can switch back to the... Uh, to the uh. Now, one thing that we have learned, right, during this stuff is that everybody says, you know, you're trying to make sure that this is your... The, as an employee, right, on the, on the floor, wherever, you're trying to make sure that this is a, an addition. You don't want this to be nuisance, right? So it's really important to have the right solution first time. And it's important to include the people from the floor. So for example, this particular app from the warehouse, I've been working with somebody who has spent 15 years in the warehouse, pretty much. So uh, now, from the standpoint of uh, where are we moving on with further and how does this work, right? Once we can prove this on, the, on this particular pair uh, of theory, what we're going to do, we're going to port it over to something that just requires a voice. So we want to see how different it is if we use it on either Vuzix or ReconJet or the other ones. One thing is somebody mentioned, there are no standards when it comes to this stuff. So if you write an app, even though it's an Android on, on Vuzix, does it work on, you know, vendor B, C, or D? You know, so that's one thing that we're also going to try to um, try to see. Okay, so these are these are the slides in case everything failed, right? This is the stuff that's pretty much going to look like when we, when we do the uh, warehouse counting. Also, we're going to try to see if you can do the, the traveling salesman kind of optimization so you don't send the people running all throughout the warehouse without any sense of direction. So we're going to try to minimize those, those trips. Now, future projects, right? I like only to talk about things that I have done, but Everybody's talking about future, so just kind of a couple of slides. Uh, first thing, we do the um, uh, restoration, like I said, and during the restoration, a lot of times we bring different crews that might not be familiar with our system. So what we're going to try to do, and this is probably going to work through with Epri, right? What we're going to try to do is uh, imagine that this is a storm restoration. Now you see these poles and all the other devices. During the, the storm, if the storm blows through, they, they're probably going to be down on the ground. So, it might not be through the glasses, it might be through the uh, tablet or something, but what we're going to try to do, we're going to try to tie it back to our GIS system, and once when you tie it back to the GIS system, it contains all the information about the assets. So it should pretty much draw for you where the stuff is missing and what, what is missing. And it's also going to recognize, okay, I need one pole, I need one cross arm, I need three fuses, I need, you know, all the other stuff. And it's going to send a notification to the warehouse how much stuff is required for this particular location. So that's theory. I don't know how it's going to work in practice, right? All right, so that is the first one. And then the second one. Everybody probably heard earlier uh, uh, cognitive computing, right? So here's the second one. So you use the glasses, and then on the head end, you might have a cognitive computing engine. You load, this is the transformer. So you load all of the instruction manuals, you load all of the um, operation manuals, you tie back to our Pi historian, which is where we record all the data from the transformer, and then you can pretty much talk to that person just like you're talking to your senior person, right? And then this thing can lead you through everything that you need to do, and it's also gonna be able to tell you if any of the parameters for anything on this transformer, and I can go on for about 15 or 20 of those, but it's going to tell you if it's within the parameters. You can look at the history if you had any other problem. And also, hopefully, if you have any problems, you can tell the symptoms of the problems. It can lead you to, uh, to the solution and tell you how to do it. So that's kind of the idea in terms of what we have done and where we're going. Now, from the full-scale implementation, like I said, uh, we're probably going to go later on in this year and try to see if uh, our uh, supply chain is along the lines with, our, with these glasses being used in the warehouse picking and warehouse counting. These two applications probably might be a little bit further out because it, it requires a lot more than just uh, uh, basics, basic app writing and stuff. So that is pretty much it that I had. Uh, if you guys have any questions. questions? Uh, All right, thank you very much. Yeah.
Got it.